everyone. Good evening. Um, welcome to the talk about the uh, LibreOffice template system, the extension formerly known as Volmux. My name is Thorsten Behrens and I will um, guide you through a few slides um, of this um, quite interesting, if a little bit fringe, um, extension, um, Java extension to LibreOffice. So very quickly, what is it? Um, um, it is um, actually written um, from, from and for the city of Munich for their uh, use of OpenOffice and then LibreOffice. In a sense, it is a template programming system, uh, which means it is there to have a large set of templates who interact with each other, who can include uh, templates where you can actually write code that dynamically does something uh, with the template and with the text um, and use that produce a lot of, uh, in this case, document or government forms. Um, and it integrates affiliated functionality like data inputs and um, mail merge, for example. What you see here is the um, sidebar, the custom sidebar of Volmux when you install it on the left hand side and on the right hand side the result of such a uh, template run. Um, so this is a letter uh, with data filled, um, multi-page. So, so that's the product. Essentially it is for producing uh, this very complex, uh, mostly government but not exclusive to government, but very complex forms. Project history um, started, as I said, uh, inside the city of Munich with a, uh, with a goal uh, to replace an older system that, uh, first of all, was not maintained anymore and second, that wouldn't work with OpenOffice. Um, and it was developed uh, alongside the migration and then uh, I think in late 2000, 2008 or 2009, was put into production. Uh, 2012, it was a major upgrade and a rework, um, due to, mostly due to the fact that at that time, uh, the city of Munich migrated from OpenOffice to LibreOffice. There were some changes, um, slight API changes, but mostly semantic changes in the API, so they took the opportunity to clean up and to modernize. And there was another major rework, 2020 and 21, uh, with a move away from custom Java dialogues and UI uh, towards native LibreOffice UI, mostly located in the sidebar. Um, so sidebar was available a bit before, but you have to bear in mind that there's like, especially in enterprise, uh, setups like that, there's several years usually for new functionality even to become available in the uh, deployed version, so, so there's always a bit of a lag. 2023, finally, with the uh, sad migration away from LibreOffice in Munich, uh, the move to, uh, um, away from the Linux project uh, to GDF. Um, I'm quite happy that, um, that was, uh, there was funding to do that. There's always a bit of work um, when, you, uh, when you change uh, the way the project is maintained. Um, and there was an opportunity for further improvements and further cleanup. Um, and I consider it a highly valuable um, piece uh, of the uh, LibreOffice extension ecosystem. It's um, the size it's to the tune of, I think, 60 or 70,000 lines of Java. So it's, it's quite a large project with, with a lot of value, I believe. Um, with a with move uh, came the, uh, the suggestion to rename it because the, the, the actual original name um, is, a bit of, is a bit of an oddball. And it's, um, it's even an oddball name in German, but internationally um, people are just scratching their head what is was it is about. And um, to credit, I think, uh, Uwe for, for the idea, uh, LibreOffice template system, uh, shorthand, lots. I think it's quite a suitable name that sufficiently describes um, what it is. 
Major features, um, as I said, it's a template engine um, for really complex document generation. Uh, it also includes a form generator where you can have for PDF forms, you can have your checkboxes and radio buttons and whatnot uh, in a nicely GUI supported way. Uh, and also for filling those forms then later on. It has some extra features around mail merge, in particular if you need to generate multiple versions, multiple copies with different recipients, with different blocks of text there or disabled um, um, for your forms. Um, and it has so-called content-based directives, which is shorthand for text programming, so you can have very dynamic templates, like depending on the, on the uh, on the clerk name, depending on the, the department, depending on the role, your, um, your template behaves differently. So you have different things included or excluded, you have different uh, expansion of words, etc. Um, this is the, the general idea. So you have a hierarchy of templates. Um, with this wonderful uh, software engineering dry principle, don't repeat yourself. So you have all your information exactly once. So you have your letterhead and your footer and your, your, your logo. All of that is in exactly one place. And everything, everyone is including that. Uh, and then you have those little building blocks we generate then the full document out of and whenever your logo changes or your address changes you have exactly one place you need to change another million documents and templates and copies over over all your staff that you need to go through um, what you see at the bottom this uh, wm uh, um, opening uh, brace uh, c and d uh, that is that is a glimpse into this text programming thing. So this is an include statement, like you know that from many other systems, that just pulls in another fragment, and you can do that recursively. So the included fragment can include another thing and another thing, um, etc. You can also add access control, for example, so you can um, have that on various places on your file system or even in a database. Um, so, for example, that the, uh, some legal disclaimer on, on the bottom of the page can only be changed by the legal department, for example. And as I said, um, it's uh, programmable in quite extensively, so you can have F statements, you can have loops, etc. Um, you can personalize that. Um, so if you like, that, that's just another, uh, uh, another aspect of the programmability. But what you can do uh, as someone using it, you can have different roles. So you can, let's say, have, be part of some three, four, five, ten uh, virtual departments. And then depending on your role, you would have a different sender or a different ex phone extension or a different email address like that. Um, or completely different looking uh, templates, like if you work for the, for the county and if you also work for the, um, I don't know, for the federal state, for example, and the government, that, uh, that is doable then. Um, data can be pulled from very many places, uh, also from, uh, from an LDAP. Um, so with the, let's say, with the role-based information that you need. And of course, you can impersonate, so you can overwrite things, you can write letters, um, if that is permitted from your administration, for other people. And below that, this, in, this, in this box, you see another um, text programming segment, uh, how to do this um, kind of data supply thing, uh, pulling something out of a database uh, with a query and then um, working on the text, mangling the text a little bit and putting it into the document. Um, yeah, that's a screenshot from the, from the mail merge uh, extension. Um, there's support for the forms, so you can also like virtually print a PDF with a form support um, and you can support those content-based directives, which means you can print five or six or seven different versions of your document with uh, sections there or removed. For example, you have one version of your work contract that is for your employee, the other one is for the HR department, and the other one is for the, 
um, for the workplace union, for example, and there might be different, uh, different texts that you need uh, to include or exclude for that. There's a preview, and you can also switch to data sources, uh, so you can have like a kind of a production version, and you can have a test um, a version of your database. Um, okay. And several output formats, of course, PDF or print or just fill an ODT document and then continue editing that. Um, so then um, some, uh, let's say, ongoing report. I, I keep uh, having this or a similar version of this talk uh, since last year um, and has been the process of uh, moving things over to TDF that has been ongoing since about a year. That process has now concluded. Um, so current state of affairs is that the Git repositories got moved and really moved. It's not a copy, it's not a, it's not a fork. We've physically moved the, the, the GitHub repository from the city of Munich over uh, to LibreOffice project, which means the old links still work, but you get a redirect and then you end up on the LibreOffice uh, github.com LibreOffice site, which is nice because we don't want to fork things, we just want to move things so anybody who's contributing and still has the old links will then automatically get redirected and the pull request will end up uh, with the LibreOffice project. We did quite some work around the URI translation before that. Volmux was, or LOTS was available only in German, which is nice for the city of Munich, but it's kind of unsuitable for, for a project like, uh, like LibreOffice. So we changed that and moved it um, to WebLate and we added the necessary code and infrastructure to have this, the same translation workflow as we have that for LibreOffice and the website in other places. So people just go to WebLate, do the translation there. When there's changes in the code, they get eventually imported there. And when there's new translation output, then it gets extracted. And occasionally, I don't know what's the cloth, what's the, the time frame there, but I don't know, once a week, once a month, get, gets committed back somehow magically. Okay, so, so whenever there's new translations that gets committed back um, to the code, which is great. And also we moved the documentation. Um, there was a bit of an um, uh, interesting thing in Markdown. So it was kind of auto generated from Markdown and then a static website was generated from there, which was also not something that would work really well with our um, TDF translation work. So we moved to media wiki syntax and added the necessary markup so that also the, the Volmux slash lots uh, documentation and handbook is now in the wiki and it's integrated in the um, included in the translation workflow so it would also end up on that light. We fixed a number of problems and fixed a number of bugs and extension now works with all active versions. Should probably change that from seven from master to seven six and we continue to support that, so if there's any problems um, coming up with master, we're going to fix that. Uh, yeah, and quite some robustness changes. So while we were looking at that, we discovered that some, some code was a bit, assuming a little bit too much, so we, we removed a bit of brittleness there and hardened, thing, and hardened things and made it a bit more fault tolerant. And um, also the fact that the the config, so we're simply not in a position where we control what the users do in their environment, so we simply don't make as many assumptions as you can make in a corporate environment. So even if there's no config, we still start and then we fill in defaults. And um, if there's an old config that was back in the day, the configuration was also done in German and has German keywords, if we find that, we read that still, but um, the new config format is, um, is English, so, so that is what we recommend. Uh, and also that's what, what's written out by default. Um, some build fixes, some, ch some changes in the, the way that is built in Java. So there's a, a Jenkins job now that uh, regularly builds that. 
Um, we also changed the, the internal names in the code, so the namespaces uh, are now org.libreoffice. Um, uh, org.libreoffice.lots for the, for the namespaces, for the packages, and org.libreoffice.ext.lots for the ex name of the extension. Um, yeah, and um, while we were there, we did lots of uh, translation. Hopefully, that's better. <laughs> lots of translations, um, not just the, not just the, um, the documentation, but also inside the code for comments and for the how-tos. Um, finished the handbook, uh, as I said, so that's now fully translated in the wiki. I think it's near 100% uh, English and German, and some other languages um, catching up quickly. And yeah, and lots of people, so that's the great thing, like lots of people actually uh, help with translation um, and um, that's, that's going really well. I'm very happy uh, with that because obviously as a user-facing software, there's, it's of no use like for, for, the, for, the, for the typical end user, if it's not in the local language, it's of no use and the software is complex enough that, that you would need it translated, otherwise you wouldn't be able to do much of it. And of course, also having the, the handbook and the documentation translated um, is quite important. Next steps. Um, so we don't have a landing page yet. I'm not sure if we actually need one. Um, the old project had one and that was then linking uh, to, to, the, uh, to the download and uh, to, the, uh, to the handbook. Um, so, yeah, hard to say. I, I, would, I would assume it's probably good enough um, if people know that it's there and uh, um, a search engine query would find the extension page and the wiki page uh, with, the, with the handbook, um, but um, happy to, uh, to be told otherwise. There's a bit more renaming work necessary. So for example, the handbook still talks about Volmux and the code also contains lots of uh, old Volmux references. Whether that is valuable to change that in the code, not sure about that. Clearly the namespace and the package cha name change that's was important because with that we can actually upload um, helper libraries and stuff to Maven, which is really quite useful then for Java. Uh, what I think would be quite useful is to um, get the logo changed or have a new logo uh, for lots. Anybody who feels like designing or sketching something, um, you know, would be most happy uh, to see some, uh, some suggestions there. Um, there's a bit of bug fixing. There's still some handful or two of bugs open in uh, GitHub. So we use, we go, actually, since it's a GitHub project, and host it there um, with, with, the, with the original version under the LibreOffice uh, umbrella. Uh, we're using GitHub also for the issue tracking, uh, makes things a little bit easier and more streamlined and doesn't need like interference with, with Bugzilla, which most people actually go for, for LibreOffice core bugs. So um, yeah, we are with that. So, so that's a bit of bug fixing and um, plausibly with the 24.2 version uh, that we want to make work, plus a bit of QA work to make sure that that really is functional. So um, for releases, please do watch that space down, uh, the slots releases page. The, the current one, which is beta level, is 19.01, and there's a 19.02 already um, uh, in preparation, so yeah. Go check it out if there's any problems. In particular, I'm interested in problems with uh, um, uh, non-English UI and uh, latest versions. And of course, if you have a platform uh, that I'm not, um, I'm not using like Mac, I would be interested as well if everything works down. Um, yes, and um, then it's almost at the end uh, of the talk. So this is a call for contributions. I mentioned a few things already. 
Um, comment translations is uh, very appreciated. It's a very nice, easy hack, not just for LibreOffice, where almost all translation, uh, comments are translated now. So now there's a new project for easy hackers uh, for some quick fix, like you got half an hour in the evening and you'd like to contribute because you haven't this week, then go check out um, this commit there. Um, that's very easy. Um, UI uh, translation, um, so the, um, that's the current state in WebLite, so you see uh, um, English uh, is um, pretty finished, and German is uh, also pretty much done, but there's some other languages, um, uh, the, what's that, can't read that, too small on the screen. Oh yeah, Dutch, interestingly, that's also 100%. So um, feel encouraged if you're not 100% yet um, and you speak, you're a native speaker of that language. It's not that many strings, so, so that is uh, also doable in, uh, in finite time. Uh, so yeah, translation, obviously, and um, documentation clearly uh, would benefit from some cleanup, from some search and replace, just get, get the rename done there, and maybe the, the language is not as polished as it could be, as, is not as well explained as it could be, or there's some old screenshot there that, that could be easy to replace with something new. So also any, any contribution will come there. As I said, a new logo would be cool. Um, and of course, if you like bug fixing and new features, it's open source. Um, I'm happy to mentor anyone who'd like to uh, get their feet wet right there in the code, uh, just uh, poke one of us. And we also, like usually we hang out on the LibreOffice uh, IRC channel, so that's probably the easiest way if you want interactive uh, feedback, otherwise just use the uh, developer mailing list for some general information. Yeah, I was showing that, and as you see, um, this logo is, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit obscure, so I, I think it's not. But we should have a new one. Great, that was that. Um, thank you lots. Thanks a lot for your attention. Are there any questions I can answer either here or later in the hallway? Any questions? Okay, then thank Sorry. Then thanks a lot again and um, hope to see you later, maybe at the Hackfest. So that could be your first contribution, some common translation there. See you then. Bye bye.